The Ruckpack 40 from REI offers a minimalistic form factor with some big functionality. And in this review, we're gonna be diving into the men's and the women's version, both of which Hannah and I, our content strategist here, have been testing for a week each. I'm Tom, the founder of Pack Hacker, and we love helping people optimize their travel experience with guides and reviews just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Let's jump right into the urban-focused, budget-friendly, functional ruck pack from REI. The ruck pack from REI stays true to their technical focus. However, a lot of things have been optimized specifically for urban travel. At the time of this review, it's offered in a couple of different colors, as well as a men's and a women's version. The men's is offered in black and dark army cot. The women's version is offered in black, cacao, and seaweed. Of course, we went with black because black. We dig the low profile from an aesthetic perspective. However, beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. That's why we pulled our Instagram audience to see what they thought of the look of this pack. We'd love for you to head over to Instagram and follow at Pack Hacker so you can be involved in future polls. From a branding perspective, REI has kept it minimal as well. We have a subdued logo on the front of the pack. There's a small logo on the strap, a small label indicating the pack name and capacity, as well as a tag that indicates the men or the women's version of the pack. From a materials perspective, REI has incorporated some good stuff across the board as well. There are YKK zippers throughout, the main compartment zipper being a number eight racket coil zipper. If you haven't heard of YKK yet, they're a Japanese zipper company and they make some of the best zippers in the world. There's ITW plastic hardware throughout. They usually make a lot of buckles for the military, so the plastic and the buckles are of high quality. The material on the exterior is a 210D ripstop nylon. This is a bit of a lower number for a pack. However, that ripstop feature will help prevent smaller rips from getting larger with this bag. And lastly, there is a spring steel internal frame that helps a lot with keeping the pack structure with the lower denier of fabric. Starting with the outside of the pack, let's take a look at the harness system first. To kick this off, the main difference between the men's and the women's focused packs is gonna be this harness system for a couple different reasons. First of all, these straps are different for each version. On the women's version, these straps appear to be a little bit thicker. On the men's, a little more narrow, and there are different shapes on each of these as well. On the women's version, the harness system is anchored a little bit lower than on the men's version, and this optimizes for a smaller torso, so that bag is gonna sit a little bit higher on your back, which helps distribute the load. Small note on the women's focus version, if the pack is a little bit higher on your back, you have a ponytail or long hair that can stick right into the back of the pack. Hannah can verify. Yep. Starting with the straps, we've got some decent density foam going on here that helps with a comfortable carry. On the top, you have some load lifters which help optimize where the weight is on your back and helps fit the pack to your body. We were a little bit confused on this, however, because the anchor is about halfway down the strap, and this is especially noticeable on the men's version. When you pull and tighten this, the strap can kind of get crumpled up a little bit. Usually packs will anchor these a little bit higher, so we're not exactly sure what's going on with the anchoring here too. Doesn't seem to be optimal. There's also a sternum strap here, which has a built-in safety whistle. If you ever get into a bind, you can use that. Also two elastic loops on the straps. You can hang a carabiner clip off of it if you'd like. Any way you wanna use that, they're right there. Plus there's a perfectly padded hip belt at the bottom. Not too big and great for urban travel. Provides a lot of support without being bulky. What does make it bulky though is that it's not removable or hideable. When it's not in use, it's kind of just like flapping around at your sides and it can get annoying quite quickly. We prefer packs where these are removable or hideable. A lot of other packs do it. So go take a look at some of our other reviews if that's important to you. The hip belt offers an elastic keeper which helps with strap management, which we love. However, you're not going to find that on every strap of this pack. So the compression straps on the side, sternum strap and these shoulder straps don't offer any additional elastic keepers to keep those straps from freely dangling around. There's a pretty hefty back panel here that you can definitely feel. There's some mesh, some very dense foam, which helps with a more structured carry on the back. However, it'll take you a little bit to get used to it. So you can definitely feel it. I know Hannah and I were trying this out. First couple times we had it on, we were like, oh, that's kind of weird. But then as the week progressed, as we wore it every day, we definitely got used to it and kind of started to like it. 
helps with ventilation, about the most ventilation that you can get here without having a external frame. On the top, you've also got a stitched handle that you can use if you don't wanna put your pack directly on the floor. Although you can't hide the hip belt individually, the entire harness system hides if you do want to check your bag. So that's a great feature to have. Keeps the straps all nice and tucked away as it's going onto the airplane as a carry-on. Pretty easy to use, just unvelcro it from the bottom, unravel it, and then zip all these straps away. It can be a little bit tricky to line the Velcro back up perfectly, but with some practice, you'll get better at it. One additional minor con and nitpick here is that there's always an exposed zipper on the outside of the pack. Some packs have like a little bit of a fabric flap to hide that a little bit, and it does look a little bit odd. Doesn't affect the functionality at all, more of just an aesthetic preference. We don't like to have like an open looking zipper around the entirety of the pack. Your mileage may vary. Of course, we're gonna bring everything up that we can in this review, even if it's a really tiny nitpick, and this is definitely a very tiny nitpick. So that's it for the harness system. Let's move on to the other components on the exterior. There are two handles on the side of this pack as well, and these are gonna be good for taking the bag out of the overhead bin or carrying to a cab, things like that. Shorter distance carry. These aren't necessarily optimized for longer distance carry because they're anchored towards the back and the side of the bag. So the weight isn't evenly distributed, gives you a little bit of tilt as you're carrying it. The water bottle and the side pockets are large, compressible, and expertly designed. Each has a small cinch strap with a nylon gusseted material, and there is a stretchy mesh material here as well. Great for fitting larger bottles. If water bottles are not your thing and you wanna hold something a little bit longer, there are diagonal compression straps on the side here as well, detachable with a buckle. So that's gonna be great for holding things like a tripod. You can stuff a jacket in there as well. Super helpful to have that feature. Additionally, they're great if your pack is a little bit more empty and you just wanna compress it down a little bit to give it a smaller form factor. Above those compression straps are two nylon loops which can help hold in taller items as well or use as a carabiner clip. Basically anything you wanna use in the exterior of your pack. Low profile so they don't come out too far. However, they're there if you'd like to use them. Now onto some of my personal favorite features of this pack that give it that high functionality and minimal aesthetic. First of all, there is a hidden daisy chain on each side of these packs. Gonna be great to have those lash straps if you do wanna use them. However, they're hidden by a flap if you don't wanna use them. Also, there are four small pockets here where the straps go that are ideal for holding trekking poles or other longer items. Again, when you're not using these, easily stow them away to keep a low profile, better in a crowded urban area so you're not getting caught up on everything. However, when you hit the trail, it's easy enough to just take these out and utilize them as you see fit. Really smart design going on here and we love the functionality and the minimal aesthetic. Lastly, there's a dedicated zip compartment on the bottom of the bag that's gonna hold a rain fly. This pack offers some weather resistance on its own, however, having that ensures the next level of weather protection. Quick deploy, always there, easy to access. Also, you may be able to fit a couple other items inside with it, maybe some dirty clothes or sandals if your shoe size is a little bit smaller. Moving on to the interior of the pack, let's start with the quick access pocket on the top. This thing fully opens up in a horseshoe fashion, allowing you quick access to things that you wanna grab on the go. We love these types of pockets and the placement is great. Next up on the wearer's right-hand side, you have a side access pocket here with a bunch of organization as well. First of all, the YKK zipper on the side is paired with a small pull tab, which helps you open the side pocket with ease. It's one of those small little details that you didn't know you needed until you have it. Once you learn about it, you love it. This whole side system kind of reminds us of the Eagle Creek Global Companion Pack that we've reviewed, as well as the Peak Design Travel Line. This type of organization is something that we would have liked to have seen in the top pocket, just to a bit of a lesser degree. The top side pocket offers a soft interior, which is good for tech that's a little bit more delicate or things with screens. There are four pockets here for pens, pencils, styluses, maybe even a spork or portable chopsticks if that's your thing. And then there's one larger divider pocket below. Lastly, there is a zip pocket that goes behind this entire organization system. Arguably, that's a little bit more secure since it's under two layers of zippers. So just good to put anything back there. Great organization going on on the side of this pack. The wearer's left side pocket is a little bit different and that's going to offer an interior 
mesh stretch pocket. This is good for a reservoir tube to fill with water. You can throw a water bottle in the interior as well, where I found that using this pocket for like a keyboard, if you wanna travel around with one of those or something that's longer and flatter, it's great for that use. One of the things that I dig with these side pockets as well is each side serves a very different function. However, they look symmetrical from the outside. So the wearer's right-hand side zips down the entirety of the pack and the left-hand side zips down only about halfway just to make it more functional with the intended use case of each side. Moving on to the main access of the pack, these zippers here are lockable, which is a nice additional security feature. One note on that though is that you can access the main compartment from the pocket with the mesh inside of it as well, and that is not a lockable zipper. So this isn't really a bulletproof solution. However, if you are looking for something a little bit more secure, go take a look at a bag from PackSafe. We've reviewed one on our channel. They definitely put security top of mind when designing their packs. The zipper positioning here allows you to get a full view inside of the pack after only unzipping these a little bit. This is an awesome design compared to other clamshell bags that open up all the way. Normally you have to unzip those a little bit more to get an entire view on what's going on inside of your bag. When you open up the pack all the way, you'll need to unbuckle those side compression straps, which is a small annoyance. Some bags position those to where they're not behind the zipper. However, with this, it's fine since there's just two on each side. The opening is a pretty large space that's optimal for packing cubes. REI makes their own brand. However, really any brand will do in here. We are a big fan of Eagle Creek's packet Spectre Cubes due to their lightweight and durability. There is a top meshy stretch pocket here, which gives you a little bit of depth. And there is a plastic clip here for keys as well. This larger mesh pocket on the top is good for flatter items or like smaller things like underwear, socks, etc. if you aren't using packing cubes. And lastly, on the back of the pack, there is a hydration pocket slash laptop compartment. There's a hydration port on each side of this bag, depending on which side you want the hose to come out of if you are using it with a water bladder. When using this compartment for your laptop, we definitely recommend a padded laptop sleeve. The pocket itself isn't structured or padded and it's a little bit loose overall. This blue thing helps a little bit with holding it down. However, it's just not quite as structured as we'd like to see for putting your laptop inside of here without any additional protection or padding. Lastly, on the back of the pack, there is a reversed zipper here. It's a little bit mysterious. That's gonna be what's gonna hold the internal frame sheet. It's not really a pocket. I guess if you wanted to, you could like stuff a bunch of cash down there if you're just really cash rich or something and you're traveling. However, it's just a reverse zipper. You're not really meant to access it regularly. Holds that internal frame. At the time of this review, Hannah, our staff content strategist, and I have been testing both the men's and the women's version for one week each. Both of us like the fit of the pack, even more so after we got used to that stiffer foam on the back panel. Is this a great bag overall? Definitely. Is it extremely durable? It's pretty good. There are definitely more durable packs out there. It's not a military grade bag. However, the materials that REI has selected for this thing and how they put it together, it's a pretty solid package. And we're excited to keep using this in the future as we test it for longer. All right, so to wrap this thing up with some pros and cons, the top access is great. You can fully see inside of the pack with only a little bit of unzipping. The water bottle pockets are really nicely designed. This bag offers a minimalistic aesthetic and big functionality with a lot of hidden features on the exterior. We like that it keeps a clean, low profile and still offers some great functionality. On some of the cons, the laptop compartment isn't great and it's not as structured as we'd like to see. You can't hide the hip belt, which can be an annoyance if you don't wanna use it. And lastly, the load lifters appear to be improperly anchored, especially on the men's version. This is apparent with the thinner straps. They can crinkle as you tighten these up. The REI Ruck Pack offers an overall solid experience in carry and organization. The aesthetic is minimal and there's a bunch of hideable features on the outside that tuck away when not in use. A great blend of form and function. We found several small nitpicks with this pack. However, there's not a ton of glowing cons either. It's great that REI is considering the men's and women's focused carrying experiences as well. Thanks for taking a look at our review on the REI Ruck Pack. Be sure to head over to packhacker.com slash newsletter, sign up for our newsletter and never miss an update. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you in the next video. There are s'more there are s'more. Great for taking the car, the car out of bags. No. The Ruck Pack 40, the Ruck Pack 40.